flight simulation is only one small part of the work being done here at the NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. You see, Ames is one of the largest think tanks in the world. It's like a giant knowledge bank where Earth and space sciences are researched, deposited, and later drawn upon. Let's take a closer look. This is Hangar 211. All of the aircraft that you see here are research models used for testing advanced concepts in aviation design and engineering. While the work done here is experimental, it nevertheless addresses some very real problems of modern air transportation, like how to handle the demands for growth in a world of diminishing oil supplies and increasing costs. Well, the aircraft in Hangar 211 may provide some answers. Let's look at a few. This is the XV-15, commonly referred to as the tilt rotor. This experimental aircraft might best be described as a combination helicopter airplane with almost the full characteristics of both. Like a helicopter, the XV-15 lifts off vertically, climbs to a safe altitude, and then tilts its rotor assembly to a forward thrust. Now acting like an airplane, it can carry its payload at twice the speed of a helicopter and on half the amount of fuel. Behind me is the QSRA, which stands for Quiet Short Haul Research Aircraft and the Augmenter Wing Jet. Both of these planes are excellent examples of NASA's creative use of surplus. You see, they're a pair of hand-me-down Canadian de Havilland military transports that were modified to test new concepts for a class of planes called short takeoff and landing aircraft. The Augmenter Wing Jet is so called because it integrates its engines, wings, and flaps in a unique design that increases aerodynamic lift. They also have these special nozzles attached to each engine, which provide additional lift and control. They can be rotated from a vertical to a horizontal position, which allows more versatile use of engine thrust, either straight down or straight back. It's been projected that if these design features were scaled up to, say, the size of a 727, such an aircraft would be capable of taking off and landing on a 2,000-foot runway as compared to the six to 10,000 feet needed under present standards. Short takeoff and landing aircraft could circumvent time-consuming ground travel by bringing some air services closer to the population centers. Such a concept, as suggested by this artist's sketch, would rely a lot on these types of lightweight, thrust-augmented planes. But what about noise reduction near population centers? Well, in addition to its own high lift system, the QSRA has been equipped with a very special wing and engine design. Its engines are mounted on top of the wing, allowing exhaust gases to pass over the airfoil. As a result, the QSRA is the quietest four-engine jet in the world, capable, too, of taking off and landing on about 300 feet of runway. NASA's experimental aircraft are merely suggestions of some of the directions air transportation may take in the future. Perhaps fleets of short takeoff and landing aircraft may indeed be the answer to airport congestion. Maybe the problem of limited runway space wouldn't be a problem if planes were allowed to land on water. Or think of how much noise would be reduced if airports covered their runways or built them underground. The 21st century will undoubtedly see more supersonic travel, and eventually, hypersonic aircraft powered by liquid hydrogen may take you from New York to Paris in less than an hour. The future is always open to speculation, but what's nice about it is that we have the knowledge and the tools to shape it the way we want. 
And by addressing the problems today, we may get the upper hand on tomorrow. An important part of any culture is its perception of the universe. From this perception come ideas, beliefs, and even behavior. Scientific knowledge derived from space research can modify these shared assumptions of our place in the universe. Now, how much space research we get is a function of how vigorous the economy is. In a time of high inflation and unemployment, how do we decide how much money to spend on space exploration? And what are the most important things to look for? Those decisions are as political as they are scientific.